So my uh, last ellipse drawing mechanism, a tricky little one, which um, involved us doing a little bit more work than usual to um, help GX Web uh, model it. It's uh, the one here on figure 177. Now what's tricky about it is that it has these three sliders which are widely separated. So the, this, the two sliders in the x-axis um, and then we've got the one slider there on the y-axis. And we'll see what happens when we try and model that. So uh, let me get my axis. Uh, we can draw the mechanism. It's got basically it's got two uh, points here. And two lines, and these these stay parallel, but due to the lengths of the uh, let's make sure that it didn't that it did get stuck onto the wax. So it's not what I wanted. Let's remove that. I want it to be stuck at the intersection of these two part, these two lines here. Okay, so the key aspect of the mechanism is that this distance here. Is the same as this distance here. And then let's make this distance B. And this distance here is going to be B minus A because this is going to a parallelogram. And if we make this distance C, then this distance here has to be C minus A. And so here's the, the mechanism, with the exception of the fact we have not positioned E on the y-axis. The problem is, GX Web is not going to let us do that. Um, it basically is not able to sort this mechanism out. Um, although that is really what we'd want to do. So we're going to have to give it a hand. Um, what I'm going to do is specify first the locations of A and C, and I'll specify them by specifying the x coordinate, and the way to one way to do that is to specify um, their is to use this constraint, which is a parametric location on a line or a curve, and um, for a point lying on a, on an infinite line, that parametric location is just uh, uh, well, the point lying on the x axis is just the x coordinate, the y axis is y coordinate. So make this point, uh, point C, uh, uh, x coordinate S, point A, x coordinate T. And then we can ask, what's the distance between E and the y-axis? So the y-axis is actually a name. There it is. Now, the, the <clears throat> uh, problem here is that um, GX Web is having a bit of trouble finding that distance. So we can wait. It'll, it will probably time out in due course. So I'm going to cancel this. Um, I'm going to give it even more help. Instead of specifying these distances, 
these distances are rigged just to make these lines parallel, to make BE parallel um, to DF. So we can see that if we move, for example, T, we can see that's just a part that's a, maintains a parallelogram. Really, what we're wanting is to find the, the value of T that puts um, that puts point E onto the y-axis. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just uh, delete that constraint and delete that constraint. And instead, I'm going to put in parallel constraints. So to make this line parallel to this. I clearly, even though these are equivalent mathematically, um, I'm hoping that this is going to uh, give the algebra something a bit easier to deal with. And so let's just repeat the uh, request. And yeah, uh, it was easy for the algebra to deal with it. Now, what I'd like to do is make that distance zero. So to find the value of t that makes that zero. Well, that would not be too difficult to do by hand if you look at a linear equation. But I'm going to show you how to uh, use the computer to do that. Uh, first, I'm going to copy. And notice the copy, when I hover above it, I also like copy text. Um, that's what I want to do. I want to copy the text. Because what I'd like to do is use um, Wolfram Alpha. So it's so there's my equation in Wolfram Alpha. I want to I want to solve it. And I want to solve it for t. Oh, I want to solve that equals zero. And Wolfram Alpha is pretty permissive about, about syntax. Uh, sometimes you have to take a second guess. But it, is this, it has interpreted what I wanted, and it's given me a solution. Now, I'd like to copy that solution back in the GX web. Um, what I need is a plain text version. So it's a copyable plain text. It's Wolfram language, but if we copy this, um, that's really what I want, but I don't want all this and all uh, these conditions. So what I'm gonna do is copy to the clipboard and I'll paste it back into Wolfram Alpha. So there's my solution. And I can select out this piece here. Uh, copy that. And that's what I want. That was solved for T. That's what I want for um, instead of T. I can just paste that in. Uh, Wolfram is an implicit multiply. Kind of handy to replace that. And you see the E is now sitting um, on top of the y-axis. And as we move S, let's, let's let this move a bit further. even further. Now the ellipse is drawn by point F. Let's just create that. Oh, I've got two things selected. Uh, 
And let's just watch the makers on mark. Oh, we flipped our mechanism there. That can happen. We've now got the mechanism sitting there. Uh, opposite around. We shouldn't let it go through 12. Take it up to 11, let's see. No, stop it. Ah, oh, no, flipped it again. So, finally, let's confirm that that thing is, is an ellipse. Um, ellipse confirmed, left to the viewer, what are its major and minor axes? 